Hey guys, today we are going to learn how to paint a boat. Here are the materials you will need to get started. 140 pound watercolor paper, a thick brush, watercolors, and masking tape. First, we're going to begin by masking off our paper. This will help create a very nice edge for our painting. First, we're going to lightly draw a sketch onto our watercolor paper. And I personally like to use reference photos from the internet as they help me define the scene a little bit better. Now we're going to wet our paper everywhere except for the boat. This is referred to as the wet on wet technique where you take wet paint and put it on wet paper. Now with a small amount of paint on our brush, we're going to begin to paint our sky and our water very lightly. Both the sky and the water should begin dark and become lighter as they approach the horizon line of the painting. Make sure to leave white space where you'd like the highlights to appear on the water. A quick and easy way to achieve realistic looking clouds is to take your still wet paper and take a tissue that's dry and rub it over the wet spots in different patterns and that can really pull out some cool cloud patterns. By using a hairdryer we can make sure that our first layer is completely dry before we add the second layer. Using a dryer brush with a little bit more paint begin to apply random hill looking shapes on the water where you want the waves to begin. I've heard other artists refer to these waves as looking kind of like mountains and that can be a really easy way to remember the shapes that you're supposed to go for. As you begin to put your darker shapes in, make sure to leave some space for the lighter blues to come through as that'll give us the illusion of waves later on in our painting. As the waves move away from our point of view, make sure they grow smaller and thinner and lighter in color. That will create the illusion of depth in our painting. For the mountains on the horizon, we're going to use the same blue we've been using and we're going to lightly paint those in. These can be really any shape you want. Um, as long as you're happy with them, go for it. Now that our first layer of waves are a little bit more dry, we're going to mix a tiny bit of black paint with our blue to create a very nice, rich, dark, deep blue that we're gonna start going over our existing layers with to create more shadow and depth. Remember to not cover the white highlights you left in the water because that's going to be our reflection for the boat later on. For the clouds, we're going to take a little bit of black that's really wet down and we're going to add some shadows underneath the existing shapes that we left. For the sailboat, we're gonna begin to add some black into the mast and kind of start defining the shape a little bit more. You can be very loose on this. It can be more interpreted if you want. It's really up to you. So ultimately it's your vision. So have fun with it and do whatever you feel is best. In my opinion, you can get a really good result with a very loose flowing brush stroke. Now we're gonna come back with a more intense mixture of blue and black and we're gonna start going back over our waves and creating more shadow against the shapes that we've already created. Still leaving some underlying blue coming through as well. I'm also adding a little bit more green into the waves as well. Be very, very sparing with this, but it can add a nice Caribbean color to your painting. While you let your waves dry, continue to add some details to the boat. Remember to have fun with it. You don't have to be super specific. Let it be loose and more impressionistic. Though I will say oftentimes less is more, so don't go too heavy on your boat details. Now we're gonna go back to our waves and continue adding layers of darkened blue that's going to really build up the contrast of those waves and give it a lot of depth. 
The same thing goes for those clouds. We're gonna take uh, another shade of gray and add to the bottom of those shadows we've already created. Remember to be not so specific with your shapes, be more loose and flowy and that'll give a really nice look. For the boat, I didn't want to leave it all completely white because that would look a little strange and off, so I added a little hint of blue and red to the body to help it stand out. Now this is my favorite part. You can take a white ink pen and begin to pull out some of the highlights of the waves like I'm doing here, and that will give them so much detail, and that's the finishing touch that makes those waves look so good. You can also come back with a darker blue and really define the shadows of the waves as well to really help them pop. From here on out, it's basically just touching up and doing fine detail stuff, making the waves. The consistency that I want them, bring in some more detail into the sky, stuff like that. So this, this part's really up to personal taste. Be warned that you can really overdo it, so go light at first and slowly build up. Don't go super extreme on this part because you're already so close you don't wanna ruin your painting at the very, very end. And that should wrap it up for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, like this video. And thanks for watching, guys. I'd love to see your paintings. So let me know how they went. And I'll catch you next time.